Well, hi, everybody. Um, I am starting a painting f uh, that will be donated to my university, where I taught for <laughs> 34 years or more. And the painting will be auctioned off, and all the money will go to my named scholarship, the Joella Jean Mahoney Scholarship in Fine Art. So anyway, I'm starting the painting, and uh, I never pre-draw. I know I'm going to do a landscape because that's what I'm known for. And this is my 20-year retrospective catalog. And that's uh, 65 to 85. Oh, and wouldn't it be that young again? Oh, that would be great. And and then this is my 40-year uh, catalog to 2002 uh, to, no, 1962 to 2002. Anyway, so I like to paint upside down and sideways so that I don't get too enslaved by s subject matter. Now, my passionate attachment is to the subject matter here uh, in the Colorado Plateau. And actually, the cliffs outside of my studio they are the very edge of the Colorado Plateau. And when we drive up to Flagstaff and drive to Santa Fe, we're, all, we're on the flat on top of the Colorado Plateau. But anyway, I love all this broken country. And right now we are in the monsoon season, and that's the monsoon series. So. I'm just going to start here. And and we I'm going to start with a blue sky, but it might change. And so I just I just I just need to get some paint on here. Now I start out with thin layers of paint so that I can build up Layers of paint and gradually thicken the paint. So I'll start with the the, squ the sky first and the. Uh, I'm painting on a colored background. It's called tinting the ground. It's because we don't experience color next to white. Color is an experience that we have to have one color next to another color in order to
in order to experience color at all. And for, for instance, if this were a white canvas, I really wouldn't know what glue I was, was working with. getting what's called an, an underpainting and now I work with a fairly limited palette it's an old-fashioned palette. Um, it's called the Rembrandt palette. And it's only about 10 colors. And there's every color in the whole world in the art store. But, but I, I like to mix my own colors and So that so that the color really has greater richness. For instance, when I use black, if I use black, I always put red or green in it or or blue so that it's not just dead black. So I'm just, I'm inventing, that's what I'm doing. And that's really what I like to do. I go out and do my homework outside. And this is obviously Sedona, that's a two hour painting. So I just make a study. And then, and I learn about the shapes and the colors of, of everything and the relationships. And then I just put the painting in the car and put it away. I do not refer to my studies. And I never work from photographs. I do not recommend working from photographs, ever. I'm, now I, I know people do that and there are some people who even shine the photograph on the canvas and paint around it. But I would rather invent. And
So the Colorado Plateau is a, is a land of, of um, mesas and broken country. And it makes it very interesting. Because we could hike our entire life here in Arizona and never run out of adventure, never run out of canyons, ever. And what I want to do is fill the whole canvas first. And then I have shapes to work with. And I can build Um, a, a meaningful whole. Now, a large painting, I like to have at least three months to work on it. So what I'm doing is <clears throat> just building a, a, a base. upon which to work. I'm not making up my mind too soon about anything. Because I, I want to be able to paint something that is not the same old, same old thing. And now when I, when I do commit <coughs> a commission, <coughs> people will tell me, well, they want an inner canyon or they want a landscape or whatnot. So, so then, um, I work out <coughs> a painting that that is uh, in the series of an inner canyon or a Lake Powell series.
Okay, now I'm going to turn it on its side and see what I have. Well, there may be a suggestion of, of a, a little water course. And the other thing is, it's very helpful, well, it's a good idea to get the paint on in as many ways as you can. At this stage, it doesn't matter. Because I'm still just feeling my way about how I'm going to render these shapes and Just a minute, I need to let this down. Do there. So that's just the beginning of um, a landscape <clears throat> with monsoon clouds and Uh, I went a 
let it go in a minute. We always have to remember that our paint rag is our best friend. And <clears throat> it's a good painting tool if I wanted to, to vary that a little bit because it was so ponderous. And actually, if you find you're having trouble with a painting, the best thing to do is wipe it off. And we don't need these two people standing up here. And, and this doesn't bother me a bit. Because I'm going to go over it. I'll go over it with what, whatever paint I, I have. That, that I have in mind, and uh, maybe that will See, it makes it look, look better if it gets wiped down. Actually, a cloth is a terrific painting tool. And maybe I won't even have any water there. Or or maybe I'll continue it on, on there. And anyway, that is a beginning. That's all it is. It's called the underpainting. And I'll let it dry up a little bit. Now in, in Arizona, oh, here it's so dry that in a couple of hours I could come back into the studio and, and work on this some more if I wanted to. Which, which I will do because it will have dried up enough so that I can put the next layer on. And then I'll decide if I want to have any blue down there or whatnot. 
and turning it on its side is is very very helpful if I want to have a straight line oh and pretend that this might be Lake Powell area or something and I want to have some water at the bottom. If I, if I turn it on the side, I have a pretty good chance of getting a straight line. And you look ahead, you look ahead of the line that you're drawing And you use your whole arm. So that could be a shoreline if, if I wanted to have some Lake Paul water in there, or maybe there'll be a, you know, a submerged dune here. And And maybe a, maybe a, a little a little more water in here. So anyway. This will develop into a finished painting, but it takes time. It'll take, I mean, I would give myself at least a month on this painting to decide on really what design I want. And maybe that, and maybe that isn't what I want. So the only way to decide is to do it. In art, the only way you know what to do next is to do it. And it's a combination of analysis and intuition. So the painting gives me feedback so that I know how to finish it. And I don't know yet. But anyway, I recommend painting upside down and sideways to become released from the tyranny of subject matter rather than, you know, endless drawing of red rock crossing or whatnot. I mean, of course we can do that, but so this kind of painting comes out of my years of backpacking and hiking out in the canyons um, in southern Utah and the Colorado Plateau. That's where I get my information. And I love to make it up because then I can come up with something other than a picture.
And this one is experimenting with a dark sky, not a blue sky. And I painted on the side, I painted this way on this painting a lot. so that I could concentrate on the design and not the subject matter. Because the subject matter comes through anyway. Anyway, that looks like pretty much of a mess, but I'll fix it. And the adventure, one of, one of the great adventures of art making is to solve our problems. It's all problem solving. And that's one reason why it's so essential for kids in school in a non-competitive way to problem solve and be very comfortable with it. And I always give my students homework. And one day uh, up at the university in Flagstaff, a co-ed came into my office and. And I always say, do your homework before you do your math or your chemistry or your history. And she came in and she said, Miss Mahoney, you're right. I did my painting first and then I could see my algebra. So I gave us both an A. <laughs> Anyway, I'll work on this some more and then I'll show it to you again. <laughs>